the 19th of July today. And we're leaving at about uh, 4 o'clock. to work too well so uh, now the trouble to decide whether or not this uh, device is even worth it so uh, we'll have to go from there In order to complete the deep dive research on Voltaire, including Lionel LeBron, one also has to look into the history of calculus and the history of quantum mechanics, quantum physics. And that's what makes it a little more complicated because without the understanding of quantum physics and calculus, your understanding of Voltaire, even Hegel, is extremely limited. And Planck gives you sort of a, 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 an indicator of where things could possibly end up going because, uh, well, things were moving towards a certainty in terms of the deterministic physics. It was Planck's work that turned things around and said, no, things are indeterminate. And then you cannot uh, come out and state that there isn't a God. So it pushes... Ironically enough, it pushes atheism back into religion. And so now you have science and mathematics as its own religion to, without any, with mathematics and science being the God. But these indicators aren't always there. They're not always obvious. And so you have to sort of dig around. It, it does take some time. It's a, you don't understand uh, quantum mechanics. You don't understand uh, uh, the history of calculus, particularly, or cal calculus itself. Then you're not going to understand uh, how the puzzle comes together because it requires this sort of cross-reference between these different uh, understandings. I haven't checked up on Lionel Lionel, but it's probably more or less the same thing. Uh, his world is falling apart, and it is more and more falling apart. 
the mask thing, the, the, the pandemic is... <laughs> has become an issue of hypochondria. People say, well, yeah, mental health issues are up through the roof. You know, they're, they're rising at a rate never seen before. Well, yeah, that's just people were in a mass panic. The entire pandemic was nothing more than a panic. And so you could classify it as a, as a case of hyper hypochondria. Where people with just the sniffles think they're dying. Of course, that puts a lot of stress on, on families and on the individual and, you know, everyone that they're connected with, uh, you know, gets stressed out. And this, of course, puts a sort of a mental taxation on the whole thing. But it's all, psychology, it's all psychology. And ironically enough, the psychologists of current day don't see the soul. And this is, this is why I say it's ironic because psychology means study of the soul. That's what it literally means. And yet they say there's no soul. <laughs> so this is, this, this is, once again, an entity or a group of people, uh, psychologists, who uh, state that they don't fundamentally exist. If the soul doesn't exist, then the psychology and psychologists don't exist. Neither does psychiatry. It's, mer it's neurology, not psychiatry. And if you look at the mess of the people who are mentally ill, you want ever, ever, ever witness a person who is mentally ill or had a, had a, had a friend who is mentally ill, or a family member, you know how limited the, the medications are. They really don't do much of anything other than make a person a zombie. And that's why in many ways why they're called zombie meds is because the people who are who are using them behave as zombies. They, they really can't do much of anything. They're very slow. Uh, they're very sort of... Uh, well, slow, well, what, are they called, what do they call it? The zombies. They're not there. Mentally, they're not there. And that's why you see the, the movements, the way they have the movements and everything. This is all part of the zombie movement. It's not that the mind isn't active. It's not that they, the, the, the thoughts that they're being attacked by the causes of the manic behavior. That's not... That hasn't diminished. What has diminished... What has diminished is the physical capacity. Thank <laughs> And this is kind of what you see in uh, Biden. Biden has a diminished capacity. But it's not necessarily due to the medication. It's also because of uh, the condition of senile dementia. But in a world without rules, having the election stolen doesn't matter. I mean, and that means there is no, fun fundamentally speaking, there is no in the United States. That's gone. situation 
of chaos. And this is what Dostoevsky describes in the brother in, in, in the book uh, Crime and Punishment. The, 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 the socialism devolves into into chaos, and then from chaos. It proceeds to destroy itself. So we're looking at in terms of in terms of history, in terms of where the what called the Western world, or the European world, the white world, it's in its decline. And it's at the point of self-destruction. There'll be nothing, in many cases, that will, that will really stop this. And it'll be the end of the white world, end of the West world. We're in a I noticed that when we go through the bumps, it pushes the camera up and you start looking at the sky. So. My apologies for that while I correct things. As we discuss, uh, discussed with my dad, the destruction of civilizations and empires is global. It's not really restricted to one region or another. And people have always survived the collapse of their environment. Many had to move, but those who remained also were able to find a way to survive. So yes, there's the state, yes, there's the nationality, there's this and that, but then there's also survival within, within the conditions. about 9.30 so 
about uh, 21 hours into the day. Let's just say 21 hours into the day and 30 minutes. Our discussion is a little unused today, our conversation, that happens every once in a while. We go through something significant and today has been mostly a, a troubleshooting day. I've been, I'm still working on the router that came in. But uh, we'll see, we'll see how that ends up working out. Uh, got a bit of traffic here, so clearing on the left. Uh, get the bus coming. Oh, the bus letting me go. Once again, yeah. Netflix has become, particularly with a lot of their the newer shows. I guess this is common across all platforms. You're into the more of this, what we'll call, I guess you call it virtue signaling. And making everybody feel good. But the thing is, not all things are feel good. It's not always a pleasant life, but there's also certain things, certain things need to remain private. There are certain things you talk about and other things you don't, because the things you don't talk about are the things that are private. You have the movies sometimes, these uh, shows, feel like getting into areas that, uh, well, are a little sensitive. Victorian, it really hasn't changed because it's all about pretense. 
it's not about the reality of what you are, it's, it's sort of, it's about the pretend, it's about the fantasy of who you are. And it never really touches upon the real, per, the, the person's real identity in terms of what there possibly is. And of course, everybody has to have something wrong with them to make you feel sorry for them. So that's a given in any movie. Somebody's already always dying of something. And that's true, in life people are always dying. There are people who are sick and terminally ill and they have the good days and the bad days. There are people who aren't terminally ill who have, uh, well, like myself, I've got the physical limitations because of uh, neuro, a neuromuscular disorder. There are my good days, but good bad days. There are things that go right and things that go wrong. I like cartoons because they tend to take a more positive look on things. And even when something is so-called more serious, uh, they deal with it in a sort of a satirical manner through comedy. And that's kind of my preference. I'm not a type of person who likes you more or sit around and be this sort of, you know, potent type of person. Oh, look at me. Things are wrong. I mean, yeah, okay, things always go wrong. But it's also good as well. But there are, this is a, there are people who see nothing but negative. And, it, and, and it, when something not negative does happen, even if it's tiny, they'll obsess over it for days on end. And it wrecks whatever time they have, that focus, that obsession, pulls their, so I think it's not something that could have been positive, it makes it negative simply because they dwelled on the one thing. So the question is, you know, how do you want to live your life? And this is sort of, you know, I think Lionel LeBron is kind of figuring, figuring this out there, things that piss him off, and, and he's sort of calmed down a little bit. But, <laughs> but my mom, is, as much as she disagrees with the way Lionel's approach to things, and she's on the conservative side of things. Always has, uh, you know, some pretty harsh criticism from the liberals. Although she holds her tongues, or holds her tongue more often uh, amongst her friends because her friends, if she says anything about being conservative, uh, uh, who are they're her friends are liberal, they'll just simply jump down her throat and basically attack her for not, for, you know, for not being liberal. So she wants to keep her friends. And, Liberal friends are like that. You have to be, you have to have to shut up or, or, or and not say anything and uh, go along with their things, or you're not going to be their friend. In other words, you have to think like they. Liberals will have are people who are only tolerant of themselves. They tolerate nobody else. So your views have to be in agreement because they have the best views. And this is one of the, one of the shows bunked. You know, if you're vegan and stuff like that, you're liberal. You're better than everybody else. And that's kind of the that's kind of the view that the Democrats, liberals, and these people on the left. And this is even true of Voltaire that they were better than other people.
it's eight to ten, I should be at the appropriate speed, and the signals are working, so. We're okay. And I'll keep my right turn signals on, because I will be taking the right turn up to the top of the hill. These headlights moved up.